So far, I've shown you both a visualization and implementation of k-means. However, I have not yet illustrated the advantages and disadvantages of the algorithm. As you learn more about machine learning, you'll see there is never one ideal approach to any problem, nor any one algorithm suited for every problem. That is why it's important to understand both the strengths and weaknesses of k-means. Advantages. When handling a clustering problem, there may be use cases where you need all data points to be assigned to a cluster. Not all algorithms guarantee that each data point will be assigned to a cluster, and thus, this is one of the strengths of the algorithm if your use case demands every data point be assigned. K-means is also very easy to tune. As you saw in the last video, there is only one significant parameter requiring tuning. That is, the number of clusters you would like created. But as we saw, this is not a difficult endeavor through the use of the elbow method. Finally, it's very easy to implement k-means. With high-level libraries such as sklearn, you don't need to write the algorithm, but rather make a call to the k-means class already written in sklearn. Disadvantages. K-means can't model all patterns well. You'll see here, this data set creates a smiley face pattern. Ideally, we would like four clusters created, one for each eye, one for the mouth, and one for the circular outline of the face. However, k-means has essentially split this data set into quadrants, which is not what we would like to see. As I'll show you in future videos, other algorithms such as dbscan can actually cluster this data set much better. A second disadvantage is that k-means is greatly affected by outliers. In this illustration, the two large circles are centroids and the smaller circles are data points. You can see in this contrived example, there is a blue outlier in the top left corner. It is dragging the blue centroid up and to the left, farther than we might like. For that reason, there is a data point that is incorrectly assigned to the red cluster. In this slide, all of the data points have remained in the same position, but the outlier has now been removed. With the outlier gone, the centroid is in a more reasonable position relative to its cluster. Because of this, the previously misclustered data point is now in the correct group. The last issue with k-means that I'll discuss is the need to specify how many clusters you would like created. While I mentioned earlier that it is not terribly difficult to pick a reasonable number, it is a bit subjective and not an exact science. Other algorithms take a more mathematical approach, which removes some of the subjectivity. As you can see here, picking the wrong number of clusters will create problems. There are three distinct groups in the data set. However, we have chosen to instantiate four clusters. For that reason, the bottom right group data points is split into two separate clusters. This is not an ideal scenario, and we are at risk of situations like this when we use k-means.